good evening one and all i welcome you all to ganesh is academy in today's session we'll be seeing environment based current affairs let us get into the news articles one by one the first news that we are going to discuss is new fish species discovered in bengal's diga harbor okay so what is the species new fish species and why is it significant that we need to know new fish species this is the fish species that we are talking about recently scientists of zoological survey of india have discovered a new species of a vibrant orange colored deep water marine fish so it is an orange color colored deep water marine fish so it is a marine fish from diga mohana diga harbor of west bengal okay so what is its significance let us understand that and what is its name that also we need to know the new species is commonly known as gurnaths okay gurnaths or sea robins and they belong to a family called triglidae okay so they belong they belong to a family called triglidae and the fish name is okay the fish is named as terigo trigla intermedica okay terigo trigla intermedica okay and what is its significance what is the significance of this particular discovery the new found marine fish represents the fourth species of this terigo trigla genus which has been reported in india okay so this is the fourth one of this particular genus that is terigo trigla and then this contributes to the growing knowledge of the unique marine ecosystem in indian waters and it also underlines the country's strongest footprints in terms of marine biodiversity okay so these are the details which we need to know about this particular species and the body or the organization which has discovered it that is zoological survey of india this body is a subordinate organization of ministry of environment and forest which was established in the year 1916 okay and this zoological survey of india is a national center for faunistic survey okay so what is faunistic survey it surveys animals in a particular region that is called as faunistic survey and exploration of resources leading to advancement of knowledge on the exceptionally rich faunal diversity of india okay next it has its headquarters in calcutta and 16 other regional stations at different geographical locations of a country okay so this is it with zoological survey of india and the fish variety that it has recently discovered okay that is sea robins the topic that we are going to discuss now is combing operation in mukurthi national park okay so what is this combing operation and where is this mukurthi national park located and what is its significance all these details we need to know let us understand it in recent times the forest department has been conducting combing operation in mukurthi national park in tamil nadu so what is combing operation combing operation is like survey okay surveying or scanning a particular area for any threat okay so that is called as combing operation and it has been done in this national park in tamil nadu and its adjoining forest areas and this is to ensure that there was no illegal movement of people and poachers okay so they are scanning that area okay they are probing that area for any poachers or illegal movement of people that is called as combing operation and this national park is located in the northwest corner of tamil nadu in the western ghats okay and then this national park is actually a part of nilgiri biosphere reserve what are all the other protected areas which comes under nilgiri biosphere reserve they are mudumalai wildlife sanctuary bandipur national park naharol national park vayanad wildlife sanctuary and silent valley national park okay so these are the protected areas which comes under nilgiri biosphere reserve also mukurthi national park is a part of nilgiri biosphere reserve 
what are the the keystone species of this particular national park that is mukurthi national park it is nilgiri thar okay what is the keystone species they play an important role in that particular ecosystem and what is the forest type we see here the park is characterized i mean the national park here is characterized by mountain grasslands so it has mountain grasslands and shrub lands interspersed with sholas what are sholas here sholas means tropical mountain forest are called as shola tropical mountain forest forest in mountain regions are called as mountain forest okay so tropical mountain forest is called as shola here we are finding shola in high altitude area of high rainfall and near freezing temperatures and even high winds these are the characteristics of this particular area and then we have certain peaks in this park like mukurthi peak which is one of the highest peak in nilgiri hills and then there is a particular tribe that is toda tribe who are living inside this mukurthi national park and they are a pastoral tribe of this nilgiri hills okay so this is it we have to know about this mukurthi national park and a combing operation was done in this national park recently that is why it is in news the topic that we are going to discuss now is maharashtra's ephemerals so what are ephemerals let us understand that in parts of maharashtra a fascinating botanical phenomenon unfolds a certain plant species known as ephemerals so what are ephemerals let us understand that and these ephemerals patiently await the monsoon season to burst into bloom okay so ephemerals are those plant species which wait for the monsoon season to bloom so ephemerals means short period okay so they live for a short period that is ephemerals okay and these ephemerals come in two forms one is annual and the other is perennial okay what is the difference between annual ephemerals and then perennial ephemerals annual ephemeral create new individual each year which show and it will also showcase their beauty for a brief period before forming seeds and lying dormant until the next monsoon so until the next monsoon they will be dying dormant lying dormant okay it will not be active next is we have perennial ephemerals which means they have a continuous presence underground okay though it is going to bloom during the monsoon monsoon they will be having continuous presence underground with tube tubers and bulbs supporting their existence okay so underground tubers and bulbs will be there and only during like this it will be throughout the year okay underground tubers and bulbs will be there and during the monsoon season it will bloom these are perennial ephemerals whereas annual ephemerals they bloom only during monsoon season and rest of and rest of the time they lie dormant okay next from ground orchids to lilies wild yam and indian quill squill these ephemerals play a crucial role as a nectar and pollen source and pollen source for native pollinators okay there are native pollinators native bee varieties they serve as a source of nectar and even pollen source for these pollinators okay and they also preserve essential soil and water dynamics so these are ephemerals ephemerals best example for ephemerals so the term ephemeral itself means transitory or quickly fading which means they will be available only for a short span of time after that they will die they become dormant or they will go to another phase that is they um, exist as tubers or bulbs they won't be existing as a flowering plant okay so those are ephemerals The topic that we are going to discuss now is climate change and Indian dairy sector. How is climate change going to impact India's dairy sector? That is what the news is. 
In 2022, a study published in Lancet estimated that increasing temperatures and sorry, increasing temperatures could reduce milk production. So, when there is increase in temperature, it could impact milk production adversely. In India's arid and semi-arid regions by 25 percentage in the year 2020, sorry, 2085, okay. And this estimation for arid and semi-arid areas is the second highest in India, okay. So, India ranks second year, which comes first, Pakistan with 28.7 percentage is there at the first place. And in humid and sub-humid areas, this reduction was estimated at 10 percentage, okay. So, in arid and semi-arid areas, 25 percentage reduction in milk production will be happening by the year 2085, okay. And in humid and sub-humid areas, there will be reduction of up to 10 percentage in milk production, okay. So, this is what the study is. What else do we need to understand from this topic? How is heat stress going to impact cattle in India? Elevated temperatures is going to affect cow's ability to display natural mating behavior. Cow will be having natural mating behavior and this elevated temperature is going to affect the cow's ability to mate. Okay, And this reduces both the duration and the intensity of estrus. What is estrus? Estrus means the female animal's ready, uh, sorry, readiness to mate. Okay. So, when the female animal is ready to mate, that is called as estrus, okay. And the decrease in consumption rates during summer season can range between 20 and 30 percentage as per this Lancet study. And this Lancet study also shows lactating dairy, okay. Lactating dairy cows have an increased sensitivity to heat stress when compared to other non-lactating dairy cows okay so the milking the milch cow will be having an increased sensitivity to heat stress when compared to other dry cows that is non lactating cows next is because of the positive relationship between the milk yield and the heat production those cow with higher yield are more challenged by heat stress than lower yielding cows this is also there okay statements like these are important okay so, those cows which have higher yield are more challenged by heat stress than those which have lower yield because it is having a positive relationship between milk yield and heat production, okay. So, this is the impact of heat stress on the cattle. Next is, the country's milk production has been steadily increasing throughout the year, but the impact of rising temperature especially in crossbred cows will make the task of meeting the domestic demand difficult and could eventually lead to decline in per capita consumption. This might happen in future, okay. So, the dairy sector is likely to be affected both directly and indirectly. How? Directly how? The direct impact is the stress to animals caused by changes in temperature humidity index. So, change in temperature humidity index will be causing stress in animals and this is direct impact. How, what is the indirect impact? The indirect effort effect include feed and water availability being impacted. So, this is how in, indirectly it affects. Directly affecting means the humidity and temperature directly affecting the animals as heat stress whereas feed and water availability may also affect. Okay, I mean feed and water availability may be impacted and this in turn will impact the cow's productivity, okay. So, this is how it is indirectly going to impact the dairy sector, okay. Next, what is the status of milk production in India? According to the basic animal husbandry statistics 2022, milk production in India was 221.06 million tons in the year 2021-22, keeping India the largest milk producing country in the world, okay. And the indigenous cattle contribute to 10.35 percentage of the total milk production, whereas non-descript cattle, non-descript cattle are those which are not identified, those which are not documented, okay. So, those non-descript cattle contribute to 
82 percentage and non descript buffaloes contribute to 13.49 percentage of the total milk production and among the states which states ranks first it is Rajasthan okay so the top five major milk producing states are Rajasthan Uttar Pradesh Madhya Pradesh Gujarat and Andhra Pradesh this order is important from exam point of view and India's milk production is contributing around 23 percentage of the global milk production this is also important okay statements like these are very very important from exam point of view so with this we have come to end of this particular topic The topic that we are going to discuss now is new species of pangolin okay so a new species of pangolin has been identified what is the significance of this particular species let us understand that pangolin which is an elusive and highly endangered creature which is often touted as the world's most trafficked mammal the pangolins are the world's most trafficked mammals and this has unveiled a hidden secret. What is the hidden secret here? Previously thought to consist of 8 species only. Okay. 4 Asian species and 4 African species. Now the researchers have revealed the existence of the ninth pangolin species in the world. Okay. And they have provisionally named it as Manis Mysteria. Okay. So ninth species here is called as Manis Mysteria. Okay. And this discovery was made through an analysis of scales which has been confiscated from traffickers in China's Yunnan province in the year 2019 and 2015. Okay. So this ninth species, okay, though there is a disp uh, sorry, though there is a ban on international trade since 2016 of pangolin species okay the newly discovered pangolin species is already under pressure okay due to various various reasons like uh, i mean it is facing declining population i mean there is decline in population of pangolin low genetic diversity is there among them and inbreeding is also observed and also genetic load is there among these uh, pangolin species okay what are all the other eight species that we already have that also we need to know they are four Asian species and four African species. What are the four African species? They are be black bellied pangolin, white bellied pangolin, giant ground pangolin and Temmings ground pangolin. These are the four African species and in Asian species we have Indian, Philippine, Sunda and Chinese pangolin. Okay. And now we have the fourth one, the Mysteria. Okay. Manis Mysteria. Next about pangolins they are nocturnal animals nocturnal mammals which means they will be active only after the sun sets okay which means they will be active in the night and then they dig burrows and feed on ants and termites okay and they play a vital role in their ecosystem management because they help in aerating and adding moisture to the soil okay these points are important okay next is Pangolins are known for their unique appearance because they will be having scales made of keratin that cover their entire body and when threatened, when they are under threat, they can roll into a ball to protect themselves. Okay. So, if you see the picture, you will understand it better. So, this is how Indian pangolin will be looking and they are under, when they are under threat, they roll into a ball so that they won't get affected by any other animal okay these keratin scales are very hard okay and what are its habitat it is actually adaptable to various range of habitats including primary and secondary tropical forest and also limestone and bamboo forest and they are also found in grasslands and agricultural fields okay and in india the indian pangolin is found across indian subcontinent other than that, in the states of West Bengal, Bihar and Assam, we also find the presence of Chinese pangolin. Okay. What are the threats involved with respect to pangolin? First is, its population is rapidly declining due to habitat loss. Habitat destruction is one main problem and rampant poaching is another problem here. 
and they are being poached for its skin, scales and even meat. Okay. And pangolins are among the most trafficked wild mammals globally like we saw already and they are traded mostly in Asia. That is also important. Okay. So, they are traded in Asia where they are traded for their scales. Okay. And their scales are considered to be having medicinal values and their meat is a delicacy. Okay. So, that is the reason why they are poached. Next, what is its protection status? In the red list of animals which, is, which has been published, which is being published by IUCN, Indian pangolin is listed as endangered category whereas the Chinese pangolin is enlisted as critically endangered category. Next is, in India, the pangolins, both Indian pangolin and the Chinese pangolin are protected under Schedule 1 of Wildlife Protection Act of 1972, which means they are prohibited from hunting, trading and any other form of utilization. Okay? And all pangolin species that we saw already are listed in Appendix 1 of sites. What is sites here? Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Flora and Fauna. Okay? So, that is sites. They are under Appendix 1. The topic that we are going to discuss now is tiger deaths raise concerns in Nilgiri Biosphere Reserve okay? or Nilgiri Biodiversity. Okay? So, how are tiger deaths causing a problem or raising a problem? Let us understand that. First thing is, the Nilgiri district in Tamil Nadu is a home to rich biodiversity and a large population of tigers. Yes, but they have in the past two months noticed 10 tiger deaths okay, due to various reasons and this has raised concerns among conservationists and officials about the welfare and the survival of this big cats, okay, tigers. Let us understand further more details about this Nilgiri Biodiversity Reserve and the reasons for tiger deaths in Nilgiri. The first reason given here is high density of tigers. Okay, That is also a reason for higher death in tigers. How? High density of tigers in Mudumalai, Bandipur and Naharol complex of Nilgiri Biosphere Reserve is pushing the population. Okay, It is pushing the tiger population into its surrounding habitats like Mukurthi National Park and Nilgiris and even Gudalur Forest Reserve Division where it is facing negative human-animal contact. Okay, So, they can be in their original habitat, when, but when they are pushed out of their original habitat, then they have to face such negative human-animal interaction. Okay, Next, the rise in tiger numbers puts pressure on prey species. Okay, they are, There are prey species for tiger like spotted deer, Indian gaur and etc. They are being negatively affected, which means they are under pressure. Okay. And the scarcity of the natural prey, these are the natural prey, or I mean the spotted deer and Indian gaur are the natural prey of tigers. But when there is a scarcity of these natural prey, that could lead to tigers targeting livestock, okay, which will again aggravate the conflict between human and animal. Here the animal here is tiger okay which will result in more deaths so this is one reason high density of tiger is one reason next is starvation and infection this is also a reason they have conducted postmortem of certain dead bodies of uh, tigers and from that they have concluded that starvation and umbilical infection are also reasons for tiger deaths okay next is tiger population threats what are the threats that we have First thing is poaching, they are being poached for their valuable body, sorry, body parts such as skin, bone, organs and even this poses grave risk to their population and there is lack of tracking and protection mechanism here, okay. So, there is inability to monitor and safeguard these majestic animals which contribute to conservationist worries, okay. Next, lack of prey management. This is also important. So, inadequate prey population management in protected areas is also there, which may lead to imbalances ensuring sufficient 
prey for tigers is essential for their survival. Okay, so when there is a mismanagement in prey population, then it may lead to imbalances and we need to ensure that there is sufficient prey population for tigers to survive. Next, habitat degradation. Degraded habitats often offer limited resources that is forcing tigers to roam in search of food in some other habitat. So, this is also one main reason. Why are habitat being degraded? It is due to human activities like deforestation, encroachment which contribute to habitat loss for tigers. Next, we need to understand in detail about the Nilgiri Biosphere Reserve. The very name of this Biosphere Reserve that is Nilgiri. What is Nilgiri? Nilgiri means Blue Mountains. Why it is called Blue Mountain? That is because of the blue flower clad mountains. Okay, What is the blue flower here? It is Kurunji flower, Nilak Kurunji flower of this Nilgiri Plateau in Tamil Nadu. Okay, But this Biosphere Reserve is span across three Indian states that is Tamil Nadu, Karnataka and Kerala. Okay. And this biosphere reserve was the, was the first biosphere reserve which was established in India in the year 1986 and it is the first biosphere reserve under UNESCO's MAB program. What is MAB program? Man and Biosphere program that is MAB program. Okay? So there are 18 biosphere reserves in India at present and of these 11 comes under MAB sites. Okay? That is Man and Biosphere program of UNESCO. Next is it is home to several tribal groups such as Adiyan, Kurchian, Kuruman and Kurumbas. These are the tribals which are staying in these biosphere reserves. Next, it portrays the confluence. I mean, these tribal groups here, it portrays the confluence of Afrotropical and Indo-Malayan bio, biotic zones. Okay, So, it is the confluence of Afrotropical an Indo-Malayan biotic zone. Statements like these are important which can be directly asked. Next is, what are all the protected areas in Nilgiri Biosphere Reserve which we already discussed in one of our previous slides when we saw Mukurthi National Park. So, when we say we have Mudumalai Wildlife Sanctuary, Bayanad Wildlife Sanctuary, Bandipur National Park, Nagarol National Park. This Mudumalai and Mudumalai is in Tamil Nadu, Bayanad is in Kerala, Bandipur and Nagarol is in Karnataka, Mukuruthi is in Tamil Nadu and Silent Valley is in Kerala. Okay, so these are the protected areas under Nilgiri Biosphere Reserve and this is the map of Nilgiri Biosphere Reserve. The dark shaded here area is the Biosphere Reserve. Okay. The topic that we are going to discuss now is Armageddon Reed Tail. What is this Armageddon Reed Tail? It is actually an insect species. What is it? Recently in Kerala's Western Ghats, researchers from MIT World Peace University have found new damsel species, damsel fly. Okay. Damsel fly are like dragon fly. Okay. So, new damsel fly species and naming it Armageddon reed tail. Why are they named it Armageddon reed tail? That we need to understand. This species Armageddon reed tail was named to highlight the global decline of insects due to habitat loss and climate change referencing to the term ecological Armageddon. Okay? So, what does ecological Armageddon signify? It means global decline of insects due to habitat loss and climate change. Okay? So, this is Armageddon and that is why it has been named symbolically as Armageddon reed tail. Okay? And this species is distinguishable by its dark brown and black body and it also has vibrant greenish blue eyes. Okay? And with half of its eight abdominal segments marked by delicate pale blue markings. It has pale blue markings on it and then it thrives exclusively in primary mountain streams under dense canopy. Okay? So, this is that damsel fly we are talking about. Okay? Armageddon reed tail. 
So, damsel flies are actually sub uh, are actually belonging to the suborder Zygoptera. Okay, what is Zygoptera? Zygoptera means pair wings. They will be having paired wings and they are similar to dragonflies, but they are smaller and have slimmer bodies when compared to dragonflies. And these damsel flies are found mainly near shallow and freshwater habitats, and they are graceful flyers with slender body with long and filmy net veined wings. So they have net veined wings. And then they have long and slender body with markings, blue markings in between. Okay. So this is that Armageddon reed tail damsel fly. The topic that we are going to discuss now is World Animal Day. When are we observing World Animal Day? World Animal Day is observed on 4th October every year and it serves as a global commemoration focused on the promotion of animal welfare and protection of their rights. Okay, That is why we are observing this particular day that is Animal Welfare Day, sorry World Animal Day and the theme for this year 2023 Animal World Animal Day is big or small we love them all. Okay, So this is the theme which actually emphasizes the importance of the compassion for animals of all size. Okay. So there won't be any discrimination between the animal based on their size. Okay. Generally, we have a notion that bigger animals has to be given importance and other such. Okay. But then here, big or small, we love them all. It emphasizes that there will be equal importance for all animals of all size. Okay. And this observation of this particular day has its origin back to the visionary Heinrich Zimmermann who initiated the event in 1925 and this event saw its recognition during 1931 Congress of International Animal Protection in Florence in Italy. Okay, So this is it we have to understand about World Animal Day. I hope the session was very useful and informative to you. Let us see in the next session. Thank you all.